All right, <clears throat> it's me again. <clears throat> Today I have a little, yeah, not something like a, a product or something that's ready to use. Uh, Today I want to show you <clears throat> a way to uh, use yeah, Semantic Media Wiki together with uh, a workflow engine. That's a common request we have from our customers. Um, and uh, we decided, yeah, to couple these two things and uh, see how how we can uh, make use of, of the semantics. Um, that's more like what's coming in future a little bit. So um, before I forget this, many thanks also to my team because this was uh, between the customer projects we have at the moment, some short time, uh, short notice idea I had before the conference. Uh, let's try this if, if this is possible. And uh, this was really uh, until five minutes ago or so. <laughs> anyway, we are located in the heart of Bavaria. So uh, here's our development office. And um, those who know us know that we are using Semantic Media Wiki for years already. So, but basically we are coming from uh, building knowledge management system and especially management systems. So uh, we, we try to make uh, information work more productive. Um, nowadays you would say this is digital transformation and so on when we started 13 years ago. So this term was not coined already. So this is some of these buzzwords, but that's basically what we, so we help our customers to streamline their uh, digital work. And part of this, of course, is Semantic Media Wiki with all the beautiful things, you know, all the extensions and so on. And yeah, focus our management systems. So uh, like you have companies, uh, they have requirements to uh, document their processes um, because uh, they have to, uh, show that they follow certain rules and uh, have a certain uh, level of quality and so on. So that's the ISO standards and so on. And there are different flavors. So that's uh, where we come from. And we built these uh, management systems uh, in Semantic Media Wiki. So we created product boxes, so to say, because uh, usually customers don't come to us and say, oh, do you have a Semantic Media Wiki where I can do this and that. Sometimes this happens, but usually they say, oh, we found that you do a special smart management system. Uh, looks interesting. So they are looking for, uh, let's say, a QM management system or a management system for IT security and so on. So that's uh, how we uh, approach the market. And during the last 13 years, we collected yeah, reusable pieces. That's what we call from, that was originally the original idea of the company. I created something that's called semantic apps. So apps from the idea, like on a smartphone, I have a small thing that just does one thing. And um, if you go to organizations, uh, you will see that there's always the same patterns. You want to have meeting notes, you want to manage your projects, you want to manage your processes and so on. And we have these uh, um, Lego pieces uh, collected. And basically what this is, is uh, an ontology implemented in Semantic Media Wiki. Um, you have the categories, you have the forms, you have the properties, you have the templates, and that's bundled in such an app. So you, if you want to have such an app, you get these elements um, populated into your wiki and we align them. So uh, these work close together because if you have, let's say an issue, the issue can be part of a project. The project can be part of a larger management program. A process can mention the program and so on. So this is like a network. Uh, that's where we come from. Uh, and that's why we say, okay, it's, it's not only a digital management system. I mean, you can use any flat wiki without semantics and then just type a lot of text and uh, images. But if you ever was thinking about, okay, I mean, in, in Germany, that's typical that you say instead of Risiko manager, you have to say risiko manager as there is in. So you have this gender kind of stuff. And if you have a large uh, company manual with thousand uh, documents and uh, inside these documents, somewhere randomly risiko manager, sometimes it's risiko manager in. So you have to do a massive full text uh, um, search and replace catastrophe. So customers, but our mission is we are building systems, and that's one of our really big uh, goals. Don't repeat yourself. 
So we try to help our customers if they have some facts about something, like the name of a role in the company. And single point of truth. So you have one fact that's in one system, and you're not on an island. Uh, you have other systems uh, like ERP, CRM. We don't try to replace them, but we try to connect into this business world. So we have don't repeat yourself and single point of view, and that's what's driving us. And no more slides, show something live. <clears throat> well, you probably seen our wikis uh, in, in uh, one of the previous SMW cons. So here we have all these apps, like here on the tiles, we have an app to document processes. So what we showcased first, I think it was in 2018 on the SMW con was, um, let me check if I have something here, the integration of, um, yeah, I have something here. A, a so-called BPMN, so this stands for Business Process Modeling Notation, that's the de facto standard for processes. We built this into the wiki. So first idea, and this we were, we've been not the first doing this, so this has been done before, but we want to do it with don't repeat yourself approach. So we added this here. It's, by the way, a, a very nice open source project. project. So if you want to uh, take a closer look to this, check out bpmn.io. That's powered by Kamunda. That's a process uh, automation company. So it's really really cool project. So it's a JavaScript based editor. So we combined this, created a small extension to bring these two words together. So I can hit here the edit diagram button. It opens the editor and I can seamlessly like get a cold beer. You can model around with all these elements you are used to. That's not surprising. I mean, that's just JavaScript embedded into uh, MediaWiki. But what we did is um, we enhanced this BPMNIO a little bit to reuse what we already have in the wiki. For example, you have these swim lanes uh, standing for who's responsible for these tasks here. In this case, that's management. <clears throat> so when I double click here, usually I would get a prompt here and I can simply type in text. If I do a double click here, I get an input here. And this is populated by category, role, category, person, and so on. So here behind is a query that's querying what we have in MediaWiki. <clears throat> so I, I just have to say what I want to have here for the participants, like roles, persons, losing roles, teams, and so on. <clears throat> and then I get this auto completion here. Let's say besitzer. I, Take the German term here. That's okay. Now I save it. Could be that it takes a little bit long because I had Xdebug and stuff on. Let's see. So in the background now, uh, a few things happen. The editor updates the wiki. So it's creating through the API media wiki pages. So in this case, I added two steps. We will get two pages with step one, step two. And I changed the participant, so it will update the process page in the wiki and update it to now using the uh, besitzer. So it takes a little bit. I should have disabled xdebug before. Oh, come on. No, it's not Ajax. Usually it's asynchronous, but uh, I had to disable this during development. Uh, come on. OK. Probably me. 
let's open another talk there in meanwhile. That happens if you do last minute changes. <laughs> okay, now it's finally done. <clears throat> so I have my, of course, my diagram updated. <clears throat> I got a few steps uh, here. See, there are some double steps. The the issue I had now, um, but basically it's writing into uh, into the, the the wiki world. So here I have a besitzer. So that's linked to my uh, to my role. And if I rename this now, <coughs> I was already. Let's see if this works. Oh. I messed up this test case. Okay, anyway, that's anyway not what I wanted to show. So basically what it's doing is uh, it's updating the diagram. So if you change something in the wiki, it's updating the diagram and vice versa. So this is really, using the semantics we have already, the annotations we have already, and uh, it's um, in both directions. So if you change in the editor, it changes in the wiki and uh, vice versa. Um, I will have a look what's going on there. So now this is just the documentation part. That's nice because we have this don't repeat yourself effect. So you enter effect once, you update your things. You don't have to worry that your diagrams and things are updated. That's fine. but. Um, what customers usually usually want to do is um, can we auto automate can we run these processes for example we have a customer in the logistics area they have uh, uh, damage complaints because their trucks usually crash cars from companies they deliver to or they crash other things so they have around six to eight hundred uh, damage reports a year and Usually the truck driver doesn't care about this damage and just continues. And usually the companies are like, oh, they crashed our car here. So they want to have, let's say, a, a small form where they can report damage reports uh, and make this form open to their customers. And this triggers a process like, is, is the truck uh, license plate known? Uh, when, hap when does this happen and so on? And this starts such, such a process or if you want, uh, request a vacation in your organization. That's a typical process like this. So you don't want to just have it documented in your management system. You want to have something like, oh, I want to start this process and execute it. So I get an instance of this process. And um, I've created an example here. A super simple one, semantic BPMN demo. <coughs> and now we come to the point where we combine this together with the so-called workflow engine. So workflow engine, if you look this up, this is a, a term um, that describes um, engines that are able to execute such PPMN models. So that's an industry standard so that you can run this through a PPMN engine. And what happens user, usually, and that's what we see in this diagram here, that's a human task. Human task means you need to enter something uh, in a form. Now, it's us thinking again, oh, forum, we had forms already. Can we make this workflow engine run through page forms? And we don't want to store the things we enter them page forms. So we want we need to send it back to the workflow engine. So ah, why not taking run query? So a query form with a little parser function that's doing a REST call back to the workflow engine. So what's happening is here is <clears throat> we have this process. I have a start button. I hit this now. It says, okay, created a process instance. You get a UUID back. That's the instance number in the process engine. <coughs> and let's switch to that one. In this case, it's Kamunda. There are others around like uh, activity, flowable, JVPMN. So we can plug in whatever we need. So we have an abstraction layer for inter internal interfaces. So when you don't like Kamunda and want something else, you just need to create something like a small wrapper and uh, hook together the interfaces. Technically, it's usually it's REST uh, 
calls here. So what I learned yesterday that REST API is still evolving in MediaWiki, that's, that's good because we can simply reuse it in here. That's a perfect case. So <clears throat> process definitions. We see here we have our semantic PPMN demo process, and we see that there are three running instances. Let's look how this looks like. Here again is our process. So this is now not only in the wiki, it's also deployed to the workflow engine. So you see the same diagram we have in the wiki. So you can move it around between the two uh, tools. And you see here these little blue uh, bubbles, which means that there are open tasks. Like we have in total three process instances running at the moment. In one of those instances, uh, someone needs to enter the first name. And in three cases, it's waiting that someone enters the last name. I mean, that's a nonsense uh, uh, workflow, but I mean, that's, that's what it means here. So let's check this out. Um, this was the one I started now. And it says, OK, there's hmm, still nothing. It's empty here. And if I go back to my process, I should see all the tasks that are here open. So I have three instances. That's what we see here. This is these three instances. I can also add it here. That's, by the way, a transcluded special page, pulling this in from Kamunda and just showing it here in the page. And I have my three plus one tasks, so three times last name, one time first name. So go here. Hopefully this and now we come to the run query page. <clears throat> so here we have a, a form. And yeah, I can simply enter like Alex, run query. Flip. Complete it. Okay, that's cheap. So this was enter first name. And see? This is my process variable. So what we entered in run query was transferred back to the workflow engine. And the next step we are doing is, if the process is finished, we can, of course, again, pull the data from the workflow engine and persist it in semantic media wiki. And then you can ask, how many process instances did I run of this process? What were has been the process variables? Um, you can do a lot of statistics using ask. I mean, that's that's pretty cool because you're breaking up silos in this case and reusing and only have this, yeah, uh, don't repeat yourself and uh, single point of truth. It's really combined. And yeah, you cannot only have these human tasks. You can also have uh, so-called service tasks with a little bit of scripting and connectors. For example, you could think of a service task that is doing things in MediaWiki. So a small service task calling through the API and for example, creating pages for us. So we have a use case, for example, if you're doing our webinars, we are updating uh, <clears throat> our web pages with uh, the new date for the webinar. So I just want to have a small form, date, and topic. And our web page is also driven by uh, MediaWiki. So create a webinar uh, on our web page, publish the webinar on go to webinar, get the webinar link, and these kind of things. And yeah, that's all these uh, elements can be combined. Um, maybe one thing that could be interesting to show is <clears throat> what I said about the process steps. So we entered the first name. So this is a process step here. And Here, I can select which form should be used for this step. So uh, if I create, let's say, this enter first name form uh, for run query, this is the form and a template, and I want to use it in, an, in another business process step, I can just pick it here. So I have uh, like a form for last name and so on. So all the forms that are in the wiki can be used and coupled with the activity. So that's how this works. So I can, let's say, I think it's query test. I can just switch around. And that's basically it. All right. Did I miss something? 
I don't think so. So that's just to get you an impression what what can be done. Um, it's not yet, let's say, something like a product, but that's a typical use case. Uh, customers asking us for help, can we combine this or can you automate this? And then you have some kind of a project. So this is depending on the customer's needs. So this is not an out of the box solution, but depending on what they want to do. And it's with a little bit of coding, but there's not much coding in it. So it's not something like a low code platform, uh, but it's almost there. So uh, with only little effort, you can create these forms. You have also tools to auto create these things. So for us, it's simple to create a query form like this and not much left. Uh, if you need to talk to uh, other systems for service tasks, I mean, it's just a matter of talking to the interfaces that are available and that's, that's basically <clears throat> it. Alrighty, so I hope you got the idea. Hey, we have 10 minutes left. Awesome. Uh, yeah, open to questions. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> Too fast. <laughs> All right. For me, it's very interesting use case, but how you handle the other way around. You need a very detailed roles and rights management for, for building the process because uh, maybe Sometimes is uh, allowed to enter first name, and sometimes uh, other people are allowed to to use uh, enter last name. How you handle this? Hey, okay, in this case, uh, the wiki is configured completely open, and we have um, let's say two uh, stages. So, or uh, three uh, stages. So, the first is have a complete open wiki, and that's what we recommend for our customers. Really, don't be afraid because you're in a closed world uh, with uh, known users, no one usually messes around. I mean, that's a relict from the good old times where everyone has his uh, a folder on the disk drives and that's the folder for uh, management and that's the folder. Of course, I mean, if it comes, for example, for personal data, HR data, well, you would not probably store this in a wiki. Um, but anyway, um, to answer your question, second stage, using approved revisions together with semantic approved provisions. That's for us always uh, a pair. Um, you can enable this so that only people with approval rights can change these process pages. And we have a third layer that's uh, required for customers from uh, the medical area. So if you have FDA involved, for example, for your medical stuff, this is a huge approval process and you have to have sick, sick digital signatures and so on. And uh, we have, uh, a f let's say a, a multi-stage process uh, where you can say uh, who's the author of a page, who's allowed to review it, who's allowed to approve it. And um, this is um, three steps. Um, but at the end, if you follow these steps, there is an approval. And the special thing about this is that if you're already logged in as a wiki user, it needs to ask you again for your credentials to be uh, recognized as digital signatures. So that's important. So even if you're locked in already, it needs to ask you again. That's the trick you need to do. Otherwise, uh, it's not sufficient uh, to comply to all the, the rules. So that's the, the three levels we have. But a roof draft is really key for this. Uh, that's how we usually use it. Yeah. I don't have a question. Shall we go to, do you need to go to, to the micro? Or? <laughs> Otherwise, I need to, <laughs> to repeat right. everything. <laughs> you are right. Um, I have a question. So, what is the what is the the page the person is on when that has to follow the process? Is that's not this one, is it? Or that's the that's the that's engine uh, page. No, the process engine page is in the background. It's in the background. So, so this, this is this is this yeah. is like uh, our uh, navigation uh, tool. But, so what if you so if you so there are no tasks, but you can in the process you can see well here we need the mm -hmm. first name. So I think when Charlie looks at this, he says, well, just click on the thing here, and and you and then you want to pop up menu to enter the first name and then close it and you're done. Yeah, that's what we have um, here. Um, maybe we've missed this. So the open tasks are mentioned here. Uh, of course, I just dropped it here. You can uh, mm -hmm. combine this. And at the moment, there is no assignee. Uh, so the workflow engines usually, usually um, open up a task in uh, a queue. 
And if you're a member of a team, uh, you can claim a task like, okay, uh, you have a help desk, for example, I claim this task and then, and then I take care. If I'm out of office, I put it back in the queue and someone else uh, continues this. And uh, what we plan to do is, um, maybe that's your question, how to inform someone that there is a task. And what we want to do is um, use echo and uh, create an echo uh, item. So you see here a, a pop-up because let's say I'm a member of this uh, group responsible to fulfill the task. Then I see here a little message like there is a new task for your team and then you can claim it from there. Because the good thing is here in Echo, you see it here in the wiki, Yeah. but depending on how you configured Echo, you get additionally an email. Yeah. So then this is really a round yeah. trip kind yeah, of thing. Nice. Uh, and yeah. that's simple to do to just, I mean, get the feedback from the workflow engine and uh, do a little, that's a few yeah. lines of code to add uh, yeah, an echo yeah. okay. note here. Well, yeah, I like that. Yeah, but the, the question was more about the uh, usability because you had to go to a different uh, form to enter, just to enter the name. So it, it was a very small step. Uh, yeah, that's a query for, yeah, where, where, where would you expect the? Uh, well, here, if you just click on. on oh yeah, I mean, you can, you can, just open this up in a in a pop up uh, yeah, and then show like it. That. Yeah, sure. I mean that was ah, really just uh, hacked together. There is yeah. no, not much love in the in the workflow. That's right. I mean you, you can just combine this that's here cool. and for example the visualization like how many open tasks you you have. This can also be added here. So of course you, I mean what you have as data yeah. can be yeah, shown. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay. I like this. Mike. Simon. <laughs> Oh, now comes the crazy questions. <laughs> no, it's, it's really, really great. And so maybe the yeah, two questions, maybe the shorter one first. So in science, we also have a lot of non, so there are a lot of tasks that do not involve humans, like um, analyze data, transfer data in other format, create a plot, apply AI, all this stuff. So is this, I think it's not so restricted. So can you also trigger any bot scripts in the background? Yeah, yeah sure. The user has control. Yeah. So because <clears throat> so you go in a lab, you make measurements with a particular device, and if you have the information what kind of data is created, you, maybe it's also possible to suggest fitting a processing task. Not any, mm. because there may be thousands, but um, yes, do, also, do you also consider um, using semantics to Combine steps. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. If you put on a name and another name, that maybe maybe if this one. I mean, you can you can extend uh, the the PPMN. I but for example,
Please share again. It's better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, try it again. Now the time is over. Yeah. That's why it's not time. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's, that's a really good question because, I mean, BPMN.io is really open, so you can customize it. So we have, for example, these things and link this to wiki pages. So that's a customization. See, this is an, yep. an add-on. We, we just saved this as an attribute in the XML. That's the format BPMN stuff is stored in. And here we have, for example, the collectivity. And here you can pull other processes that are already there. So you can customize this in that way. You can create your own shapes here, but in general, the BPMN IO uh, shapes or the BPMN shapes, they have different standard flavors, like a user task and that what you're talking about is a so-called service task. And here you just need to deploy some custom code. Like if you want to, to uh, call and rest uh, interface and pass some of your process variables, that's pretty easy. That's uh, a few, uh, lines of, or it's a script task. In this case, it's even easier. easier. Uh, you can just pass this, make a small REST call, and then pass it to your application. You can have receiving tasks that are things that are waiting for something to happen. You can, if you have more complex setups, uh, we usually uh, put a, a message broker in between. So don't couple all REST to REST APIs because then you get a, re a huge uh, mesh of API calls, but create a message bus in between. And then uh, you, you have to think about a, a protocol, um, not a technical one, that's MQTT or MQP, but the payload you want to transfer. Yeah. Like, uh, you, as you said, JSON, I would uh, use JSON and then put it into a message and then... I mean, because uh, <coughs> since a uh, fast API for JSON, uh, for Python exists, it's really easy to build the REST API around the JSON script. and. Yep. Scientists wrote tons of Python scripts, but they are not use, usable <coughs> if they lie somewhere. But if you make them callable, mm -hmm. and maybe it's a, you need to make it workflow able, so you can put this script inside. And okay, that's not really nice. Yeah. Um, and how is the data structure? Yeah. So you have a, a process. So you build together this, um, the steps. So you have an individual template of a process, and then you can instantiate it. Mm -hmm. Multiple times. Yeah. So it's the template of the process um, stored in one template, or it's distributed on multiple templates. Or now the, the process you create uh, in the background. Maybe. Ah, the, the process definition. It's it's like this one. This is one process. That's basically the XML. That's uh, the that's that's what the the workflow engine understands. Um, but of course, we link to other things we have in the wiki. So if we, for example, use in the in the, in the participant swim lane a role, there is a, a page for the role. If we link to another process, that's another process page. If we have a, a, an activity, that's a process step page. So if you want to, let's say, persist all the pieces that makes up a, a process, it's multiple pages in the wiki. But for the automation part, it's just that. Uh, element that's needed. So here it's in clear text then, uh, for example, the, the participant. That That's not just a link in the wiki, yeah. so that's... Uh, so that, that, that's like it. kind of a the template of one step, and if you instantiate it and fill it with data, where is that stored? Uh, the data is at the moment stored in the workflow engine, Okay, okay. but it's simple to feed it back into the wiki, and that's what we want to do to be able to query all the instance data as well. And then you can yeah, not only get statistics about the process itself, but also query everything that has been run through the processes. And that make I mean, that's just a small step because uh, it's just another REST interface, get this back and then store it uh, on, on a dedicated page. So you will probably end up with, uh, let's say, uh, process and then here an instance ID and every instance ID gets this or we use slots in future. Yeah. So Put the data in slots and, and yeah. instead of uh, separate sub pages. Yeah, really nice. Because yeah. I, the, the workflow I showed was just clicking the right forms in the right uh, order. 
but that would be guided the user even more. It's really yeah, yep. great. Thanks, so Simon. the slots are a nice uh, bridge to what's going to happen after lunch, but lunch first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.